Hello, 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 everybody. Just gonna try to get us situated so you can see what I'm doing. We're gonna need to have a little close up today. So once we get started, you can let me know if I have everything close enough for you to see. If you would prefer if I put the camera, should I put the camera next to me, behind me? Or do you think you're gonna be able to see from this angle? You just let me know. We'll wait as people are coming in. It's not quite noon yet. I am just working on my envelopes here for my note cards. Chatting away. Hi, Kathy. Do a look test. Like if I were sitting here working, can you see? Hi, Pat. Can you guys kind of see what I'm doing here? Should I zoom in a little more or do you want me to set it up like it's so it's right next to me? You guys are the first few in here. You can make all the important decisions. Kathy, you can see. Now some people can hear me and some people can't. I am in the process of trying to figure out a microphone to go with my phone. Because it needs to be wireless, of course. So, hi Judy. Everyone else, I'm really sorry if you have to turn your computer up loud. It happens. I have to do it a lot when I watch videos also. So I'm just going to wait a while. We're going to give it a few minutes. We can chat. So if you guys watched my Whip It Wednesday last week, you'll know I have air conditioning problems, right? So Monday, Monday, it, my air conditioner went out Sunday night. I found out at like 10 o'clock. It was 81 degrees in the house, no big deal. Then Monday by 10 a.m. it was already up to 87 degrees. So when I went to bed Monday night after the air conditioner guy came and checked the system and all, it was 89 degrees in my house. Hi Becky, thanks for coming back. As people are gonna come in, we're gonna see if we can grab a couple more moderators to help you and Sue out. Yeah, it was 89 degrees in my house Monday night. It was miserable. I barely slept a few minutes, an hour. And then, so they came in on Tuesday. They put a new unit in. And then a cold front come through and the temperature dropped down to 69 on Wednesday. Go figure, right? So today, I just checked. It is 77 degrees with like 82% humidity. And it's a rainy, gloomy kind of day. Nothing too major, just drizzles and stuff. And then by Wednesday, it's gonna be back up to 89 degrees. So October is our month for it to kind of go like this. You wanna moderate? Okay, C. Lombard, I'm really sorry, but I, is your first name Carol? Am I right? I'm, I'm terrible with names. But all you have to do, I'm sure Becky and Sue, when she arrives, will tell you how simple it is. If someone is an obvious troll and misbehaving and they're not being a good person, then you can go ahead and just click on their name or where they're typed and you can hide the user, you can report the user just to keep our chat safe. And if you type again, C. Lombard, your name should be blue. Ah. Woo, I got it right, Carol, and you are blue. Thank you so much. So Carol and I have been chatting about hexes. She's starting a new project that takes a thousand hexes, and I'm gonna guess they're probably like one inch. Hi Vicki, I'm so glad you could make it. So Carol, are your hexes, are you doing the one inch or one and a half inch? Those, from those that I looked on on that website, they look like they might be pretty small. We are chatting a weather, Vicky. Yeah, you guys have the power. It's gonna enable me, yeah, I, I just, I love the one inch hexes though. It's gonna enable me not to have to worry about you guys because I want you to have a good experience and I don't want, even though trolls aren't my fault, I don't, I would feel bad if trolls came and ruined the experience for everybody. Now this week, I did not announce the live ahead of time with, you know, scheduling it or anything. I hope that changes whether or not people can find this easily. And 
I didn't put the word like chat or anything in it, so I'm hoping it's gonna be good. I made the title really crafty related, so hopefully people will go find a gaming channel and leave us alone. I'm gonna wait just probably about five minutes. Thanks, Becky. I am going to, like I said, I'm gonna wait about five minutes. I'm gonna keep folding my envelopes because I don't wanna start something like this that's a project until a few more people show up. I don't want anyone to miss out. Sometimes it takes a bit because YouTube does not send out the email notifications anymore. I think I'm gonna close my door partly. The new air conditioner is amazing, except that it is like so much louder than my old one. Hello, Sammy D. It seems to be kind of, oh, you got smoggy. I thought it said soggy. I was gonna say, it seems to be raining a bit everywhere. Wow, Vicky. That is scary. So you're going to have kind of, even though it's just the three of you, you're really going to kind of have a full house when you have someone you have to take care of like that. But crafting keeps us all sane, though. It keeps us going. It gives us something to do to occupy our hands and mind and keep us going. I won't start yet. <laughs> Hi, Jody. <laughs> I uh, we're gonna work on this ball today. I did start by making half of it, so we're not here all day, and we can actually finish it. But I'm just gonna keep folding my little envelopes here, just just until five after, so that we give everyone a chance to pop in. I know anyone can always go back and rewatch. But for now, I just want to make sure that I don't want to force people to have to do that. I, I know I can do it, too, and it, I just would want to see it right from the beginning and not feel lost all the way through. But if you guys need anything from me, or if anyone else wants to be a moderator, just type my name in all capitals in your little chat there, and when I look up, I'll be able to see it. And if I miss it, maybe one of my moderators will be so kind to tell me someone has a question. And then if I like need to move things around, if you can't see something or you want me to repeat it. I say we've only done these lives just a little bit. Hi, Cordula. But I'm really enjoying this. I think we're going to do lives the first and third Saturdays of the month. And we're going to do tutorials. Yes, I did. I used my tool. Before you guys showed up, I used my little envelope punch board from We Are Memory Keepers and it allowed me to punch the curves here and the notches here like this. I have a video on how to do this too. Hi Teresa, I'm sorry you can't stay, we'll miss you. You can come back and watch the replay. I'll hang out with you all over again. Oh, Sue made it. Welcome, Sue. Yes, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of neat. Do you guys like the fact that I put up a little video yesterday so you guys would know what I'm making today, any links to patterns and supplies you might need, and then if you want, you can get everything ready together and then come and join us and sew right along with us on Saturday. I have to get my bracelet. It was driving me nuts. Oh, yeah. That that's tough, Vicky. Well, let me just finish this one envelope and then we will get started. We've got 34 people with us today, so that is great. 
Thanks, Carol. Because I know between YouTube and Patreon, I can't add a third, a, well, technically a fourth video in and do a Friday and Saturday video. But I thought it would be fun to just give you all of that stuff. And then you'll have all the information if you want to sew along or do it on your own ahead of time or whatever. And then maybe do something that I feel like you might want to say, Hey, Robin, hold on, go back. I didn't catch that. Can you show that again? Or can you turn it a little this way? I do. Hi, Betty. I do have a lot of... Pat, I am pretty close to getting there. I, I'll tell you one thing. I have a super secret that I will admit to you all. I've got to do just a little bit of dental work before I'm ready to put my face in. I'm a big smiler, and I don't want you guys to have to see a little blemish that I've got on my teeth. So once I take care of that in the next month or so, we will be doing a lot more face-to-face, -face, okay? There, you guys. I was very brave, and I told you my secret, and we are going to go from there. We can't all be beautiful and perfect, right? I need to grab my drink. I like having everything right here in one room so that I can just pop up and grab whatever I need. All right. What are you guys drinking? I am drinking just a flavored water, <clears throat> excuse me, where you put those little packets in it. Did you guys see my little pouch that I stored everything in? I made a bunch of these a few years ago and they really never did well in the shop or made it at all. Would you guys be interested in these at all? Should I take... Carol, I, I appreciate that 100% and I know you guys will be perfectly fine and you probably wouldn't even see what I'm talking about, but there are some evil people out there, you know? So I do, I have some of these pouches with the different initials in it. So do you think I should pop some in the shop just to see if anyone would like them? They're just a little zipper pouch. Just your normal little ones like this. There's no, I think I interfaced them. They are nine inches long and about four and a half inches tall. Oh, Pat, I'm sorry you're not feeling too good today. So when I come across these, I have several tubs worth of stuff. You know, Pat, you're right. I have several of different things in tubs and stuff that I should probably just pull out and let you guys see them, maybe during a live stream, and you guys can tell me if anyone would be interested in them in the shop. But I just pulled this out because it happened to be sitting when I was cleaning my craft room. And I have one of the little needle keepers I made. I think this one might have been a little crooked or something, so I saved that for myself. That's how I get things around here. I get the broken and the crooked. All right, so we are going to work on this ball today. So let's get started. I decided to use the pattern from L-A-E-R-O-P-O-R-T at Type Pad. She has the one with the three separate sizes so that you can make all the different sizes. What I'm doing is I'm using freezer paper and I used this size here for my freezer paper that I thought I kept down. Now I did put a link for this for you guys on Amazon so that was really easy for you to find there I hope if you need it. You can cut this, sometimes you can find it in like eight and a half by 11 sheets to put it through your printer. Otherwise you can cut it yourself and if you take it and lightly adhere it to a piece of printer paper, you can run it right through your printer paper, you right through your printer, and like you could print all of these all out in one shot. That's true, Pat. If it's sitting in storage, it can't be sold and made no money from it, right? Plus, I've already put the money and effort into it. But I decided for me, I just took out my paper. And just like when you're doing like appliques and stuff, I just laid it down and I traced around it. I did use a little ruler just to make sure I wanted all my lines to be nice and crisp. And you can easily see through this just like you can with the, the, uh, the, the lightweight fusible and stuff like that, the heat and bond. It's really easy to see through. So I went ahead and I traced out 12 of them. 
I did make half of my ball already just so we have enough time to do everything we need. Now when you're doing hexes, there's places online that tell you exactly how big to cut out your fabric based on based on what size hexie you're making and stuff. But what I did is I just took this and I put it on my cutting mat and I made sure I had a half inch all the way around and I thought, okay, well what size square of fabric do I need to cut? I chose to cut mine at three and a half inches just because of the way all the angles are and I cut all squares out. Quick and easy, saves time, make it super simple. Why struggle through any of it, right? So I cut out my 24 different Christmas ones I chose to do this because I had a lot of these fabrics out for making the bags and Christmas is coming, right? I think it'd be really fun to do different Christmas colors, uh, like a blue and white or something, or maybe all of the snowflakes for the little tiny ornament like this. So I cut out 12 papers, I cut out 12 three and a half inch squares. And the way to get your freezer paper, I got all the cats settled down, but one of them has still decided to show up and hang out with us, Mimoka. So I have my iron. I want to have my iron set at no steam because the steam and the freezer paper just doesn't seem to, I'm sorry I'm reading you guys as you're chatting, but I have heard that the index cards work really good. Mocha, Mocha get out, Mocha sweetie go bye bye, see ya. She knocked over my fabric trash can which now means I have fabric scraps all over the floor. Okay, so no steam. When you put steam with the freezer paper, something to do with the heat and the water and stuff, it just stops your freezer paper from sticking very well. I just put my little template, whatever I'm using, I'm using Pentagons today, and I just take, I'm just using my little iron here. You just give it a little bit of a press. You don't have to sit here and hold it for very long, just a couple of seconds and it'll stick nicely. Sometimes the edges don't stick very well. If you're using the large full iron, hi Lorianne, you're not too late, so we just got started. If you're using your full size iron, you can usually just put it on and hold it and then you're good. I don't even worry about going to the other side, but you could. I have done this with hexes and left it like this for long term, like years and years, and I've never had any problem with the freezer paper staying on. You can reuse it many, many, many times. I've, I've used it a dozen times. I've used just the same 20 pieces for a, a large quilt. Some people like to use, they put their little cardstock type stuff in here for their template and they will trim it around. We're gonna trim these in a second. And then they like to fold it over. They put like, they have the special glue sticks or the glue pens that are really pointed. They like to put a little glue on there and then they fold it and they do it all nice and neat. Or they have the little starch like I mentioned yesterday and they do all of that. But I just like to go straight from, I just do the hand stitching. I don't worry about, I tried the gluing and stuff, but the glue does peel off of your template and all, but it is still just annoying. Now I can still see sort of through this the freezer paper where my fabric is and oh of course I'm on the back right so I could move this around and be a little picky on where I put it but for these I'm just sticking it anywhere I want so I have that star quilt that I was doing with the hand stitching and you guys know I had to take it all apart because the stitches were bad so I started working on that maybe five six seven eight ten years ago and then I've been still pulling it out and the freezer paper is only coming undone now because I've been manipulating it a lot. But they do, it has stayed on there perfectly fine for years and years for larger projects. You can do this with larger pieces if you're doing like the appliques and stuff like that. People do use that so in a larger format it still works for that. So after I get that all pressed, 
Let me move it out of the way so I don't burn myself. This is great for sitting in front of the TV. I used to hand these over to Rob when I was doing the hexes, and he would trim them for me. Some people like to trim them just to a quarter of an inch, but that doesn't give much of a seam to fold over. I like a little bit extra. I want to make sure that it's not going to fray and come undone or anything like that. And as you can see, I have trimmed it because you could leave it like this, but you are really going to have a lot of extra bulk on the back, and that is just too much. With this way, you can still machine quilt it and hand quilt it, and it's not too much. I don't measure or draw lines. I just kind of guess, and I just chop it. I do like to support, I don't know if you can see, I support the scissors with my fingers underneath, just so a lot of times I get shaky hands and I don't want to, welcome Helly, I don't want to like veer off and cut into it, although it wouldn't be a problem because you're just going to go ahead and make a new one, right? So I'm just going to go through and trim all of these down, leaving that bit of extra. And remember, this is just like a hexi where no matter where you turn it, they're all the same. When I put them down, I did try to make one bottom piece a little perpendicular and level with that. Just because I find it easier to trim off that piece first. It's just one of those little things that I do. Oh yeah, you guys follow those links in yesterday's video to watch the Tula Pink. She has little magnets that when you're sewing, we're going to talk about that after, but you put the two magnets right here and it holds it together for you while you're stitching it together and you don't have to hold it at all. Kind of fancy fancy. But you could just use some of your clips. Those work too. I am just using, I've got some beeswax for my thread. For my basting stitches, I just got this cheap old Walmart stuff from when I first started sewing. And I also have some leftover thread. Got my thimble. And then I was watching because when we were talking about my stars, y'all were telling me different things like I should try different thread. Maybe my weight's not fine enough. So I checked out what Tula said and I I want to, did she say like 50 weight or something for her thread? Whatever it was, I used that, the weight that she mentioned. This is Connecting Threads Essential Cotton Thread, and it's the same weight, so I just stuck with what I have. It works out really well. I do want to get a pair of those Tula scissors that she has that are kind of springy like this. Those, I have these little tiny things. They're, um... They're, they're medical from some type of medical kit at the hospital. But I have lots of these, but they really don't get, they're pretty thick blades and they don't quite get close enough to do, to catch all the thread all the way to the end. I don't think Jody could survive without her coffee. It is definitely pumpkin season everywhere, right? All right. So I don't have a fabric trash can because Miss Mocha spilt it on me. I have my needles. Oh, Carol, yeah. I want to have all of my little scissors. I want them to have that serrated edge. I think there's like different ones that are like Japanese and stuff like that that are really great. Now, I am just using a basic, simple, I buy that pack of needles that come in all different sizes, and it's just a regular sewing one. This one happens to have the gray thread on it, so I'm going to grab a different one. You want just something that you can get your eye through and your thread through the eye, and you don't want it to be a really thick, huge needle. I like, I have some shorter quilting ones in here that I don't like to use. I like mine a little bit longer. Some have gold eyes on it, some don't. I don't really know the difference. I just keep buying different needles, hoping I'll find something I like. And then I lose them. Those are those ones, Jody. the K-I, the Kai ones, yes. Okay, I am making the ball, and you need six for the bottom and six for the top. I am using this size, and I don't... 
they don't seem to measure these like they do on the hexes. So the edge, from edge to edge, it's just a bit over an inch. It's whatever two eighths below an inch and a half is. It's not, it's more than whatever. Rulers and math always take me a second, but they measure it this way. So this is a two inch pentagon and I'm using this one as the bottom one as my, oh, words today, the freezer paper. When I made this little ball, I use these. These are measured, they call them one inch pentagon. So if you measure it from the tip down to a straight edge, that's one inch. So, and you know, it's like everyone does it just a little bit differently. It's all gonna depend on what size ball you want. So it depends on what you're gonna do. This one would be a cute little one for juggling or ornaments. This is a nice one for puppies and kittens and babies. And I've seen, I follow this one lady on Instagram because that's where I follow everyone. And she makes, I believe it's this larger size. And this one's a little dusty, but she embroiders the baby's name, hand embroiders it right on here and does a little bit of different fun stuff to it. So she might put the baby's name here and maybe the birth year here. She might embroider some flowers or something on it. She does a really great job. They are so adorable. But we're making 12 of them. I've got half of the ball done just so we can save a little bit of time. I have added my freezer paper to all of my three and a half inch squares and I figured that out by just putting my hex, um, pentagon paper down on my quilting mat or quilting ruler and just made sure I had a half inch all the way around. Some people just do a quarter inch, I like to do a half inch. I put my freezer paper, I laid it down here and I traced it like I would with any type of interfacing or the, the fusibles and stuff like that. You could put it right through your printer. And now I'm going to attempt to thread my needle. There we go. Now this is just for the basting thread, so I do tend to leave this one like super long. And I just bring the tail down a bunch so that I'm not dealing with you know, three arm lengths. I don't use my beeswax for this at all. It's measured tip to flat side for scrapbooking and along the side. Yeah, see, that's really weird, Sammy I don't know why. I guess we're the odd people out because we're the ones that measure it so differently. So yeah, I'm using, this time I happen to have Coats and Clark, but there's so little on it, you can't do a bob and you can't really sew but a little bit and I don't want to change it on my machine all the time. So I save these little bits and I save them in my bobbins for doing things like this. <clears throat> now we need to get it to this point. Some people will fold over their edge. I'm going to fold it right up to where my freezer paper is here. Do you, tell me if you need me to zoom in at all. Not on here. On this one, I just do the thing where you wrap it around your finger and you roll your thumb. For the project that we're doing here, I don't worry about the quilters knot. I do use that when I'm doing hand applique or I'm doing hand quilting or something like that. Zoom in a little. Okay, hold on, Helly. Okay, and now I gotta figure out where I need to, okay. Now, of course, oops, sorry. It's gonna look like I have monster fingers now. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Oh, that, that should be better. Sorry, I had to get a drink. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so here's the edge of my freezer paper. When I do this, I don't fold it over super tight and like crease it a lot. I want to have that little bubble of space there. I find that it's easier. No, not you, Robin. You didn't want me to zoom in? <laughs> well, we're staying where we're at. This should make it pretty good. Oh, fat fingers, yeah. <laughs> um, my hands get swollen a lot, especially during the summer. But anyways, I like to leave this little bubble of airspace in here. If you were to like take it to the iron and crease it and stuff, it makes it harder when we get to the point of sewing it together into our piece. 
and I'll show you what I mean when we get there. So I'm just going to take my first piece, I'm just going to fold it over and hold it on there. I do want to make sure I'm folding it right along over the edge and it's not doing anything crooked like this because this piece, I didn't press it down all the way, hold on a sec. Sometimes I go too fast. Now it's hot. So we want to we want to hold this this shape here. Our template is going to determine how crisp our pieces are. If we're just doing a ball like this, if it's a little bit wonky, the cat's not going to care, right? The baby's not going to care. But if you're putting it into a quilt, you want everything to work together nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just I'm just reading you guys too to make sure I don't miss anything. The needle lady. I just, I want to have all the needles. I need them all so I can try them all and figure out what I want. But I need to put them in a case like this and then write down what each one is. So when I come back two, three weeks, three months, three years later, I'll know exactly what needles I used and I can buy more. Because right now I have no idea what any of these are. All right, so I'm going to fold this one over and then I'm going to take the next piece. And I tend to go counterclockwise. I, that's what most people do. You could go the other way, maybe if you're left-handed. And then I just fold this one down. Again, I'm just kind of going along the edge right here, and I'm making sure that I'm not creasing it or anything, and I have this little bit overlapped right here. I have to slide my chair down a little. I think I'm far away. So you guys, can you see this part right here that's overlapped? So I have that little folded edge that overlaps. And all I'm going to do there is I'm going to take my needle. And this is just like in the videos if you watched my English paper piecing. I'm going to just go down underneath this one layer of the flap. The freezer paper, I can feel my needle scraping on it. If you're going slow, it keeps you from jamming all the way through. I put my thimble on. And then I'm going to come up from the first flap, and I'm going to go through all the layers and come out to the second flap. And then just pull my thread through. And I'm going to do it a second time here. This is just a basing thread. I don't worry about putting in an extra knot or anything. It's just going to hold it in there for me so that when I'm done, it looks all pretty like this. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just, I want a needle that's pointed and sharp. And I want a needle that has an eye that's going to work for me. I'm thinking about going back to the ones where you could take it and you just, it's got that slit in it where you can just slide your thread through it that way. And they also have the ones that have in the center. But I like those. Are those the cheater ones you're talking about that you can just slide it through like that? See, so now I've got the second one. So I'm going to go to the next corner. I'm going to once again fold the next side down just a little bit. Hold it with my finger. If you have issues with your hands, you can always put a clip in it and let it hold it for you. That way you're not doing too much. You want to make sure you're not bending your wrist and causing any type of carpal tunnel issues. And once again, the first flap up through the second flap. Pull my thread. Now I don't pull this super tight because you see how it'll pull in the corner? I just need to go nice and simple. And if you just do it once, your corner is going to keep flopping open. So I'm going to go through a second time. If my thread doesn't stay tight enough and it gets all loosey-goosey here, it's going to be fine. These threads don't count at all. Now, some people like to go through and they go right through the center here and they come out to the other side. And then they'll come back up like this and they'll pull it through. But that leaves your basting stitches on the outside. So when you're done with your project, you got to go through and clip them all off and remove them. Yeah, I, I Becky, I think I'm going to get some stock in those cheater ones. I've gotten to that point now. I know it's time to get new glasses. I can feel it. But with this type of basting, I don't have to remove the thread. It can stay in there the whole time. I would be careful if you have like all white fabrics, I would, you know, use some white thread. But you have to remember you're on the back of this piece of the fold and that one. So normal fabrics, it won't show through. So we're just going to go through twice. Start speeding up a little. So I have this. Some people like to fold it this way, but then my angle's going in the wrong direction. So I just do one corner at a time still, not pressing the edges down at all, just kind of folding it and going around. Not pulling it super tight. 
as long as I keep it down below a quarter inch from the edge, it's not going to show up. Sometimes my tails will stick out, no big deal. I just trim them. If I had the fancy little scissors, then I get them easily. Otherwise, I just take my good old orange ones and I just get nice and close. Sometimes you have to trim it again, no big deal, right? And now on this last one, I stop here. There won't be any thread on this edge because that one's already there. And this is where I put my knot. Just once through the loop, there. Okay, so now we have, and I just leave it like this. I don't take it to my iron and press it. I like to let it stay nice and poofy to where nothing is folded down. I can show you the quilter's knot for those of you that haven't seen it before. I have the tail end of my thread in my left hand because I'm right-handed. Keep getting notifications and covering the chat. Okay. <clears throat> then I hold my needle in my right hand with the eye going towards my palm. I lay the thread end on top of the needle right here, hold it with my fingers, wrap it around one, two, three, maybe four if you want. Trying to hold everything, you're going to hold the, the wraps on your needle, grab your pointy end and slide it down the end. And it's going to make a nice tiny knot that's not big and bulky because when we do it this way and roll our fingers you're putting several probably six or eight wraps with the rolls and you see how much bigger of a knot that that made but for a project like this it doesn't really matter so now this is a good thing that you can sit down while you're you know if your husband's watching football and he's complaining because you never hang out with him and why don't you watch football with him or maybe he likes to watch westerns or dramas or you're just watching something together because you both enjoy football. This is great to do because you can just sit here. You're welcome, Carol. Oh, Carol, you don't do, you haven't done the quilter's knot before? The quilter's knot works really great for what it needs to be, but for something that, sometimes I just want a big fat knot so it doesn't get pulled through my fabric. That knot is specifically made to get pulled through so that you can bury it in your quilt. But yeah, this is great. Well, maybe you're having your morning coffee. Just have a, self, a little bowl, a little setup. It's like I keep everything in my little pouch here. And there's the back. And I just can just sit here anytime I want and pick it up. And when I first get up in the morning and get motivated, I have a smoothie and I watch, I watch something on Periscope. And it's just nice to have something like this to just sit there and work on. Just for five, ten minutes. Oh, self-threading needles. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. You see, some people will take their spool and they'll add like ten needles onto here. So that they don't have to stop and thread needles every time they need a new bit. I thought that was really kind of cool. And they have those special containers that do that for you too. So all of these stitches are going to stay inside and I'm not worried about having this green thread on my white fabric. This is pretty good fabric that I can't see through. Oh yeah, seamstress. You would think sewing is sewing, but it really isn't. We do have different little things for each one. You might be surprised, but that's sort of where... I mean, I started with other things, but when I came into the quilting world, I would started by making clothes for little kids and making purses and tote bags. I was making A-line dresses, I was making the rompers and stuff like that. And then I had this extra fabric bits left over and I watched, uh, what is it, Simply Quilts on the cable channel one day and I fell in love with quilting. How do you get Periscope? I just go into the App Center. I just go into the App Center and search for Periscope. I have it, I've had it on my phone, I don't anymore. I have it on my tablet. I like to watch Knit24, it's Sue Stokes. And she, they're from a Legacy Arts, Legacy Knits, Legacy Art Knits, Legacy Knits Arts, whatever. They're knitting people and she does she, start, she just started doing English paper pe piecing, actually, and she's doing one of the Tula Pink designs. And she does knitting and crochet and cross-stitch. And she chit-chats for like 20 or 30 minutes in the morning, 
about what's going on and what project she's working on. Kind of like a Whip It Wednesday, but Monday through Friday. I actually have a Periscope channel. I, it's like it's you're, you're talking live all the time. People can watch the replay, but they can't comment on it like you can here. But I didn't have too many people watching it, and this was like three years ago, so. Okay, I'm getting ready to go to the next part before I finish this one. Does every, you're welcome, Pat. Does everyone know, everyone okay with what we're saying? Do you guys understand this part? I'm sure lots of you have already done hexy, so it's basically the same thing. I, I've heard soap too. When we go to the next spot, I got my beeswax. I bought a big chunk off of Amazon and I just cut it into little pieces for different project bags. I have this one is in a clover, my flower head pins. I have some in Ziploc baggies and stuff like that. Okay, last one and I didn't even need to break into the black. Whoops, my needle popped off. So what you want to do though is you want to make sure it's not a crisis, but you want to try to not pierce your paper when you're basting. If you do, I mean, it's paper. It's Even though it's freezer paper, you just kind of pull it off and it'll rip, so it's not a problem. I've already pulled one out here, and then that's good. All right, so our next thing is now we need to make a duplicate of this. When we make them, we're going to make them inside out. We're going to start with our center pentagon, and it's kind of like making a flower with the hexagons, but based on the shape, it turns it into a bowl like this. So if, if you want, I don't see where, if you have a design, like if you have a white one with all red, you want to start with the white one in the center, but since it's basically an I Spy one, and this is an I Spy Christmas one, I can choose what I want in the center. You could lay it out like this and decide if, oh, I don't want two reds together. You know, the car looks good in the center. <clears throat> Excuse me, and you can go from there. I don't need those. I need, I've got my gray threaded. There, some people do them larger, and you can turn this into a bowl. I saw some videos about, they used, oh, they just used like paper, or they used leather or something, and they made a bowl out of it. So you can stop right at this point. I would, a little one like this would be fine, you know, put things like this in. When we make this one, instead of turning it into a ball, you could collapse it on the inside so that your inside would be nice and neat and your outside would be neat too. We'll play with that when we get there. If I forget, someone remind me. I only change the machine, uh, sewing needles on my machine, Vicky, when it goes thump, 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 thump. The only other time is if I know that I've done a lot of fabric postcards and then I'm getting ready to sew on a quilt. I will change it. I am sticking with my big old knot here. That is fine with me. I'm going to take, I'm going to use my car as the center. I think I've already waxed this, but I'll just wax it again. It would be cute too. No, I'm going to show you, Becky. We're just going to, we're going to make, I'll turn this ball into a bowl. Because when we get to this, before we, we're going to make these two separate, and then I'll show you how to put them together and you can turn it into it. You can do it with, you know, any type of material you want, felt and stuff like that. You can make these balls with fleece and flannel. Great way to use up minky and stuff because we're doing it all by hand. But I just put, I like to keep my tail kind of short only because when I wax it, they get stuck together. Then I just run it, I put my thumb on the thread and I just kind of gently pull it through. I don't dig it into the wax or anything. I just do it twice. And then I go and I make my tail a little longer because otherwise I don't, my needle will become unthreaded. <clears throat> okay, so here's my car, it's gonna be my center one. I've decided that this is the bottom of it just because the car is like this and I want this piece to be here and I decided since I can see a little bit of the tree it'll be like this so when it becomes the ball I'm just going to take him flip them right sides together this is the side that we're gonna stitch on right here we're only gonna stitch this one edge if you want oh, my needle wax is crumbling 
I think so that wax does expire, but they say you can put it in your hand and warm it up and put it back together, kind of like, you know, because the warmth of your hand will do it. Or very, just seconds in the microwave. Maybe run your microwave for a minute with, even with a steaming uh, cup of water in it or something, and then just let this sit in there and get warmed up. You could put it like on the windowsill if it's starting to get cold and stuff for you, but just holding it in like this, I can feel my beeswax is getting sticky. If it stays crumbly and you can't warm it up in the microwave for maybe 10 seconds, then you might have to toss it. All right, where am I? Okay, I'm doing this side here. So I can put my little clipper on here just to hold it together. Maybe if it was a larger piece, I'd wanna do that, but for me, I just hold it by hand. <clears throat> I'm going to start right here in the corner. You see where this flap is, where our edges, our two sides flapped over? That's where I want to start. But I'm going to put my needle on the back side. And I'm going to grab that corner. And when I come here, I know it's going to be hard to see. Let me see if I can get you guys closer. I have to wait for the camera to catch up. Follow my fingers, camera. Okay, we're coming up. I don't want to poke you in the eye. Okay. Can you see right here where my needle is? It's coming in right at that fold. Just like when you're doing hexes, it's the same way. Thanks, Kathy. I would love some thumbs up. And then I'm just going to pull this through, and the knot's going to go ahead and settle right into that little ow, fold in the back there. Now this is what got me in trouble with my stars. Some people said that you can go and just put, you know, like five or six stitches to the inch, but I like to go and have a bunch. I grabbed just a little couple threads from the back piece to the front, and I'm just gonna whip stitch this. There are several different ways to do it, but we've already been here for 42 minutes, so I don't wanna take up too much of your time. I'm going to whip stitch this. I want to show you how to get these pieces together. If you have to leave, don't worry, you won't hurt my feelings. Come back and watch the replay. I am laying these stitches so they're basically almost touching the one next to it. I'm just going over maybe an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch. Or a sixteenth to an eighth, eighth however you look at it. And I'm holding kind of holding my thumb and my fingers up close to the edge and I'm just using that as a way to keep my needle from dropping all the way down here. It just helps me get to there faster and I can just go quicker. And because of that, we didn't press our folds when we did it, there's an air pocket right there. As I'm going through, I can feel that paper and my needle is gonna sit right on top of that freezer paper or the cardstock that you're using and then you can just plow right through pretty quick. And I find that this allows me to go much faster. So what happens if you go ahead and they stitch through that paper? Well, nothing. When you're gonna have, you might have when you open it up, you could have a stitch that you're gonna see. But you see, I'm using a gray thread and I'm not gonna pull it hard, but you really don't see any of my stitching right through there because I'm staying in that little, what I call that air pocket. And it's just allowing my stitches to sink in so they disappear when I pop it open. And then when I get to the corner, once again, I'm gonna go into the point where that fold is and come out on this one. And then I will just go through the loop once and give it a knot. Now, the one thing, because I was talking that I didn't do, I like to put a knot right in the center of the piece. This one's pretty small. If it was larger, I would put uh, like two or three knots in. Because if I put a knot right in my thread here and I knot it off, if this thread breaks, it's only going to unravel from the corner to the center. This whole piece won't unravel. So I only have this little hole to worry about and to repair. Yep, you can do a ladder stitch like this. If you hold it open like this, you can do a ladder stitch this way. They do different things like this. This is the way that I learned and it just kind of stuck with me. Now, because this is our center and all of our pieces are coming around like this, right? I'm gonna put this piece next. 
and I'm just going to keep stitching around my center pentagon. So I'm going to fold this one up. And even though I knotted the corner here, I want to knot the corner again because we're on a new piece. And I can feel, it's hard to explain, but I can feel that paper there. So I put one stitch, and then my second stitch, I just go through and I just do a little knot. I can just wrap it around or put it through the hole when it gets to the end. And then that will secure this piece on. And then I can just keep whipping on through feeling that paper in there, keeping my stitches so that they're almost touching, especially since we're going to give, we're going to stuff this and we're going to give it to a baby or a pet. You could, they have special while she naps, the one of the links that I gave you for this crazy one. Where this pattern is, she has a link to where you can buy rattles. They're safety rattles that you can put inside. They're like these plastic containers that have the rattle in it. So if the baby, okay, I'm in the center. So I'm going to go ahead and just go through the loop and make a little staying knot there. Then that way, if anything comes apart, it's only in that one section and not your entire quilt. So I want to make sure my stuffing is not going to come out. And you know, cats and dogs and kids are not going to be gentle with your toys so you want to make sure everything's nice and secure even if it's just going to sit on the shelf in the baby's room as a decoration you want everything to be nice just make sure you're getting both fabrics when you're going through as i'm holding it here it's still allowing that little air space up there through the corner So then I grab my next piece, and since all the sides are equal, I'll just pick wherever, and I'm just going to keep going on. Winter is great time for crafting, no matter where you live. I mean, granted, here in Florida, we come out in the winter. We come out and start doing things. This is our season. You see people coming out of the house. They're walking, riding bikes. You see more kids outside playing, even though it's school time, and it's just we can come out without having heat stroke. We come out anytime during the day. A little bit darker in the morning, but that's okay. Oh, Becky's hand sewing challenged, huh? Oh, I don't blame you. October's complicated for us. We have several cold fronts, but I'm so far down past. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, do you guys do this? I just jammed it right into my skin right there. I just, I tend to, I need to put a thimble on this hand, I think, too, on my thumb, because I stab myself. We have, our weather goes crazy. We have these nice, cool days, but the cold fronts don't always come this far south. They were really shocked that we got this one. It actually stopped right at my town, you know, just a couple miles south of me, and they, they didn't get anything at all. And then the next week it'll be hot, and then we'll get another cool front. Sammy D, I'm glad I am not the only one. Rob used to laugh at me, and he thought I was clumsy, but you're just going so fast that it's really easy to pop it into that spot. Now, this is the same way I do my hexes. I like to do all around like this, and then I'll go back through, and I'll do the center, you know, the side edges and stuff. I didn't want to do too much ahead of time for you guys because I want to make sure you could see it, but now I'm afraid because I talk so much that we could be doing this all day long. And I know you guys are always so kind and sweet. You know, Robin, we enjoy your chatting, keep going, but also at the same time, you guys got a life. You got things you got to do today. Just kind of take a look at see where you finished off and what the picture looks like and you can come back with us later. I wouldn't want to do like a part two because then you guys would be stuck hanging, right? Probably could just put my stitches further apart. <laughs> Lynn says, okay, yeah, no problem. I'll keep you from doing your laundry. I did my laundry. It's in the dryer. <clears throat> Sue has no life. Sue's avoiding fall. She doesn't want the cooler weather. I'm begging for cooler weather. We're both living in the wrong states. Although I would not, I want that, 
I want the perfect thing. I want it all, right? I want the cool weather and the changing leaves and a little sprinkling of snow is fine, but I don't want to get stuck in the house frozen because of all the snow. I'm not a fan of snow. Here's a little uh, tidbit into my life. Oh, yeah, because first of all, my little tidbit, I, I've never driven in snow. I moved to Florida from Connecticut when I was 13. I lived in upstate New York for a year and a half, but Rob did all the driving. Maryland, but do they have, how much snow do you get in Maryland? We were looking at the Carolinas because they get a little bit of snow and they get cold, but they also have a lot of pollen. Ugh. So much pine tree pollen. Yes, yeah, so where was I? Who was I talking to? Lynn, yeah, Lynn. That's what I heard a lot of people say. You guys kind of miss out on your fall or autumn because you're preparing for winter and saying, no, 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 we don't want, what, five, six, seven months of the cold death frozen tundra areas and stuff. So you kind of miss out on enjoying what you got in front of you. And I, and I get it because you have to prepare for the next season. Nine inches of snow on September 8th. Yeah. I saw a lot of people got snow quite early and a decent amount too. We've had, I've seen snow twice in this area of Florida. Of course, you know, it hits the ground and melts, but we've seen snow. We've had some pretty bad freezes too, but the last few winters have been nothing. Okay, so I have all of my pieces stitched together, right? So this is what you're going to look like now. And this is where we're going to, st I think that would be a fun flower just like that on a quilt, do an applique. To do the next part, when we go to, to do this, we need to fold the center. In this pentagon, like a hexi, all of these edges have been stitched. So I can take this center out because I don't no longer need to have the support of that because all of those edges are done. And that allows me to take this and fold it in half because I'm going to go up and do this side now. So I want to put these two together. I'm going to start right in that corner again. And I'm just going to work to the outer edge. To a little bit, need to move my Sue, I'm, but I, I'm really, I'm thinking 100%, the kids and I have talked, and we're going to do baby steps. We're going to move up to northern Florida first. We were going to move right into, like, the Carolinas or something, but everything is so different from down here. It's such a shock that we thought we would just move up to a little bit area. North Florida gets kind of cold, I know, not compared to other areas, but it gets cold, and adjust to stuff like that. Moving to another state is quite scary if you sit and think about it because you don't know, you don't know about property taxes, you don't know about trash and recyclables. We're kind of spoiled down here in a senior living communities like this where just about everything is done for us. I don't have to, legally I don't have to separate my recyclables at all. I could throw everything in the trash including my horticulture and call it a day. But in other areas everything has to be switched around. Well, the Carolinas was our plan, Vicki, and that's like step two. We're going to go and take a year and be in North Florida, and then we're going to go up to the Carolinas. All right, so I have these two sewn together, right? Now, you could cut your thread and start over again, but why bother? It's Yes, you're going to waste a little bit of thread, but what I do is I flip it over. I finished right here. I'm going to go in just this flap that we folded over, and I'm going to take a little stitch, right? And then I'm going to come over to this flap around that point and take a little stitch. Now that's going to bring me right to my next corner. So this time, this one I went from the center out. This one I'm going to go from the outside down. So I'm going to fold it, flip it around so I can work right to left. I'm going to line up this corner edge. Now if for whatever reason your pieces don't line up, you can kind of cheat it. And you don't want to really put like tucks in it or anything, but you can manipulate your fabric a little bit just to make sure everything is going to line up properly. Outside of DC, 
<clears throat> oh, Lynn's got damage. Is that from the snow? I was too busy teaching you guys stuff and I missed it. So I'm just going to keep going through, stitching along like this, chatting away. And I can go pretty fast and know that I'm not going too deep based on where my fingers are because my needle hits this finger and it stops me from going down too deep. And I learned for me that this is what works really well to keep me from going into the paper. I, I Sometimes I just make the little perforations along the edge of the paper Whoa. because I just hit that edge and pop it a little. But for the most part, as I said, I stay into that little air pocket. I can also push those two pieces up when I'm holding it like that so it keeps that one space open. Oh, and I did it. Oh, Stephanie, our, our chances are eventually we're going to move. We've always wanted to move out of Florida. It's a very touristy area. We don't like the heat. We haven't been happy here, but we have a lot of things we've got to get under control first. I mean, eventually I have to sell my house. I haven't, I haven't done a lot of the things that need to be done. So eventually, like in a, within our five-year plan, we would like to leave this area. The kids and I both want, we want woods and streams and parks and we're tired of, this is the city of trees and yes there are trees but it's like trees in people's yard and there's no, there's no, there's a couple parks with trees but not a lot. There's just, it's just not what makes us happy. So this time I've ended up here so I'm just going to grab a little piece of this. I don't have too much thread but I'm going to keep going. Because I took the freezer paper out, I can fold this, I'm sitting all crooked, line up my pieces here, and I want to make sure that I stay in that overflap of the corners there so I don't have any holes. Don't pull it too tight because I just traveled over there with my thread. So does anyone else do that when they're doing their hexes, or do you guys cut your thread and start new? Iowa. It's sad when those really big old trees and stuff fall. We lost seven trees during a hurricane, but I mean, they, they weren't amazing trees and they were, I mean, they were nice and all, but they weren't, they weren't super old or anything like that. Now see, if I keep, as I keep going, I'm going a little slower because my thread is shorter right now, but it really doesn't take much time at all. You don't have to pay too much attention to what you're doing. I like to travel just another step when I not cut and knot again. Yeah, I, I used to cut it all the time, but then I thought, oh, I can do this. I thought I was really sneaky, like when you think you're the only one that's ever thought about it, and then you see that everyone else in the world does the same thing. I can actually hear it when I pierce the paper. Oh, I might make it to the end with this thread. Plain thread chicken. One more in a knot, and I'm done. I miss, I miss the sound of running water and not running water that means you have a pipe that burst in the attic that kind you know I, I miss trees and i miss you know the bubbling brooks and the rocks and the animals and stuff like that i really kind of miss all of that we moved down here when i was 13 after my little sister um, she got hit by a car and passed away so my grandparents were already down here so my father and stepmother they just you know, they didn't want to be in that house anymore because she'd passed away right there at the house in the driveway. So we moved down here, but it really hasn't been something that I enjoy. This is really, it's changed over the years. I don't know, you know, people say global warming and no global warming or whatever, but it's hotter down here than it's ever been before. And I don't like it. I've gotten to that point 
Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, the there was my I had three little half sisters, and two of them, well, all three of them were in the car, and one of them was pretending like she was driving, and this was back in '81. So you know, parents leave the keys in the car and stuff like that, and it, it was just a horrible little accident. She jumped out the back window of the station wagon because the car had started moving backwards, and then of course the car you know ran her over. And my grandparents were already down here, so that's why my parents decided to come down here. But we spent our summers in upstate New York, and we lived in Connecticut, and I really enjoyed that type of weather. I, I like those little waterfalls that you find, the little bubbling brooks and all that. That's Those are my happy places. I enjoy those places. I mean, we have rivers and stuff like that, but... Is Tracy leaving us? Bye, Tracy! Bye, Helly. There's the mom and pop quilt shops got their live stream. It started at one o'clock, so everyone's gonna go bumping on over. Yeah, Jody, I like the seasons. We don't have seasons here. We have hot and not so hot. So anyone who's left, even though you can't hear me now, as I said, you guys come back later and catch the rest of this, and I'll show you guys how to make a bowl and how to get this ball put together. I'd say maybe you got it in you, maybe another half an hour. I'll keep going until this is done or until I'm sitting, well, even if I'm sitting here by myself, I will keep going for this and you guys can just come back and see what it looks like in the replay. If you wanna see what's going in the comments, you gotta wait at least 24 hours. It takes YouTube a bit to get the comments back up. I always get excited to see the replays and to check something I missed in the comments when I was watching it live. And you've got to wait. And I, I don't have that kind of patience sometimes. All right, Kathy. Kathy, if you want to see how it's finished, come on back later. Jody, I'm glad you are here. I know you're missing chatting with some people. This isn't exactly the same, but hopefully this will get you through another day. All right, my moderators, have you guys had to take care of any trolls? I hate to ask. I don't want to jinx us. I haven't seen anybody, but I think maybe what I did made a big difference about when I posted and stuff. No trolls. Thank goodness, Becky. Whoosh. I knew last time was a weird one. I've already figured out our next live stream. I'm going to teach you how to make a Christmas present. We are going to use flannel or fleece and quilting cotton, and we're going to make a fun scarf. I learned how to do this back in 2009. Okay. I learned how to do it in 2009, but I haven't been able to find a website for it again, so we're just going to go ahead and I'll just show it to you anyways. So I don't know if you can see, but right here, my blue fabric is bigger than my red, and it's got this little bit of a tunnel bubble there. I know it's barely hard to see, but what I'm going to do is just before I get to that extra fabric, I'm going to put a knot. Okay, so that's going to hold that fabric in place there, right? make my tail a little longer I've got a lot of thread okay so and then I'm gonna hold this corner in place so that it matches up evenly you can put a clip in it if you want then I'm going to move over a little bit and I'm gonna take let's say I want to go over a little over an eighth of an inch onto the blue fabric and I'm gonna pierce it but when I come through the red I'm gonna go right next to my old stitches so it's gonna gather up that fabric, but it's not gonna have a pucker or gather on the other side. If you have to do it a lot, sometimes it shows up, but this just kind of eases in the fabric. So I'm gonna go at the top of my little bubble tunnel, but I'm gonna go right next to my other stitch. And when I get past it, it's nice and flat now and everything's even. I'm gonna go ahead and put another knot there and that's going to hold all of that in place. And after I get to the end, I'll show you what it looks like. Because when we cut things out and when we go ahead and stitch it, we know we're not perfect. Things just have issues, right? 
I'm just living in the mountains. Yeah, I, I think so too, Becky. They they have more stamina, stamina than me. I, I mean, I've thought, okay, sometimes I thought in the past, like, I would like to leave comments in certain places. And, you know, I have snarky thoughts. And my first instinct is, is I should have another YouTube account so I don't use my main one. But then, of course, the reality is, is if you need to change accounts like that, then you shouldn't be putting in the comment that you were thinking to put in. And it's obviously an improper one if you have to hide behind another comment, uh, another account. Well, let me tell you, sometimes I just wanted to say, what are you guys doing? Why are you so dumb? But, you know, <laughs> you don't do that. That's not right. All right, so... Now, when I turn this around, I can see that it has just a little bit of a bump there, but that's because I know it's there, and I'm looking at it and stuff, but it's really, it hid all of that extra fabric, no problem. All right, so I am going to, normally I would leave this thread attached, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it right now because I want to show you guys this. If you were making a bowl, you have one right side out, you have one wrong side out. You would have to take out these papers so you don't, if you want to take them out, you really don't want to leave them in, they'd be crunchy. And then you just put your bowl in, you put it in and you line it all up, right? So there your bowl would be perfectly lined and then you just whip stitch all the way around. And there you go. I love Christmas fabrics. I love the greens and the reds. I love Santa, I love snowmen. And the Halloween, I love the pumpkins, I love the scarecrows. Now you can do this all in one fabric and then you're all set. Now, it is a bit of work and everything, but it would still be cute. You would definitely have to put some clips in to hold it all together, but the papers are causing issues. But now for our ball, we're gonna want our ball to go like this. Now we can't line it up perfectly so that it's you know tip to tip because we're gonna have this hole here. So we're gonna have to offset it. Let me remember what I'm doing here, make sure I don't do it wrong. We are going to put them together, right sides together. The whole bowl thing just got me all mis mixed up. Now we don't want to put it together like this, right? Because when we turn it out, as I said, we're going to have it all stitched together weird. We want to have it so that our points go into our valleys. So when we put this together, hold on guys, hold on. I just totally got myself all confused, right? We want it like that. You see how you can see, this is our first one here, right? So then as we put the second one, it dips down. And we're going to whip stitch it together still, so what we need to do is we need to have them right sides together inside the bowl. And I'm going to put the point in here, and I'm going to start stitching around. Let's see if I got it totally messed up. Bye, Stephanie! Yeah, you know, it's still Leanne, it's like it's a little snarky thing. You want to say something to them. You want to say, you know, what what are you doing? You know, don't you understand there and there? I know sometimes there's typos and stuff, but it kind of gets crazy. Bank holiday in Germany. Oh, that's exciting. Enjoy your holiday. Okay. So I'm going to put this like this. As I stitch around, oh guys, I got myself all confused here, but you know what I'm going to do? You ever have those times when you think you've got everything figured out, then all of a sudden your brain just goes, nope, it just kind of stops working? And when I turn it around... Yeah, I think I got it right. Has anyone else made these before? I know. Hold on. Hold on. Before I lead you guys, before I lead you guys astray, I'm going to change the channel. Uh, da -da -da -da. Pattern pieces. Make it, make it, make it. 
Oh, some people put a pin through it when they're basting it around and stuff. They'll put a pin to hold the paper and I don't do any of that. Make them, make them, make them. Okay. You have two spheres. I'm still here. I'm just on another page making sure I'm doing it right. Here I am. Here I am. I'm crossing my fingers because everything here is doing really well. Okay. You know what we're going to do? We're just going to stitch this together and we'll find out what it looks like. I know, Sue, I know, and I just can't get my head on straight. And then the one the, the things that I'm looking at are just like confusing. While she naps, Pentagon ball. I really like the while she naps blog. She has so many good things on there. There's a lot of fun things to look at and to learn about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so she's got them, placed two flowers on top of one another, they'll fit together like a puzzle with points of one pentagon fitting in the dip. Okay, so I am not completely crazy. Okay. Right. I got it, Sue. I just, I just wanted to, it's one of those things where you're like, it, it's not making sense all of a sudden, but you know, leave it to Sue. She yells at me and keeps me on track and tells me to keep going. So I don't want to keep us here forever. I'm just going to make some big chunky stitches around here because we're just stitching all the way around. This does not have to be a perfect finished object for me. And I don't want to keep you guys here all day. As I said, when I get to these corners, I would go ahead and put a knot here. I would knot at this first corner. And just like on the sides, when I brought this piece around, I would go ahead and knot it again. You can take out the pieces of paper and cardstock after you've finished each section if you want. I'm just going to pull them all out at the end. Now the thing with balls, if you've never stuffed a toy or you know a, a ball like this, you, know, you can make those beach ball ones or a stuffed animal. You're fine, Sue. Ugh. Carol, I tell ya, the moment you say, I'm going to do great, oh, look how great I'm doing. I haven't needed a seam ripper all day. That's when you make the biggest mistakes, right? But as you're stitching these, you're going, as you're stuffing these, you're going to need a lot of stuffing. Now you can use brand new stuffing. Maybe you got some ugly pillows with the couch that you just never used and you made your own. You can unpick those and pull the stuffing out of those. Maybe you bought pillows for your bed that you don't quite like. You can go ahead and use the stuffing from that. Yes, they are, Sue, 100%. You know, everyone's like all oh, about the medical, and the medical is very important, of course. They're still just kind of doing what they always do. Teachers have really had to step up even more. I mean, they were already very important people in our children's lives because they spend more time with them than we do, really. 
but now they have so much extra they have to do and to make sure everyone's staying on track and the ones that are doing you know distance and virtual and stuff I know down here there was thousands of kids last year that never did one day of school once they closed the schools down so like here when I'm getting to this next one this piece of paper gets in my way so I just pull it out that allows me to bend my ball and move it around at corners going through some of that uh, when you have the fabric that has that silver and stuff on it it's a little bit harder to stitch through yeah Sometimes I think, well, I keep, when I move my sewing machine because I usually have it down here at the end of the table. You guys have seen me sew down there. And I keep a seam ripper down there. And then I keep two more up above in my little buckets and stuff. I'm always using those. I, I've seen them as necklaces and stuff too. Okay. So as we're going around, we don't want to close this up completely because we want to make sure we can turn it right side out, of course. You pull out anytime you have all sides that are sewn together, you can pull out your paper. And see, since I didn't put any of those tacking stitches all the way through, I just pull it right out. It just pops out no problem. Super easy. I don't have to unstitch anything. Yep, this is it. Thank you, Sue. Sue, I love you, lady. You keep me online. Smack me upside of the head long distance. But you see how we're kind of getting a Cookie Monster mouth, this is exactly what we want. It looked so awkward and weird in the beginning. Now when I'm doing videos for you guys, I can take a second and I can pause the video or just let it run in empty space. I can look at it and think it through. But when we're going live here, you guys are going to see everything. Thanks, Judy. I appreciate that. You guys see everything today? I've done pretty good. My brain hasn't worked 100%. It's just touch and go on a regular basis. We all have it. But I think I've done pretty good. I can pull this one out. Now these are all wrinkled and crinkled. Now, I can go ahead and iron them. You just want to make sure that when you're doing it, which I didn't tell you in the beginning, is to make sure the side, shiny side is touching your fabric. That way, you're not pressing it to your iron. But this does not leave a bunch of residue on your iron like it would if you were using heat and bond, which is nice. Thanks, Becky. Oh, Sue. Sorry, Sue, you're doing it all wrong. We're going we're gonna to keep you in line. Thanks, Lorianne. We're going to keep you in line, Sue. We're going to convert you over to the Robin method, which is not my method at all. I didn't make any of it up. That's, you know, that, <laughs> that can be very discouraging sometimes. You think you've come up with this brilliant idea, and then the bad part about the Internet, you can look it up and see that already a million other people have done the same thing. But it, it's, all, it's all in what you've learned, and if it works for you, then keep doing it. If you want to try something else, I tried the gluing, and I just, I did not care for it. Now, my ball is 100% messy. As you see, and I'm only putting a few stitches in each side just so we can get to the end. You want to put in as many on these sections as you did in the first part. Because it'll be like my stars, and it'll fall apart in an instant. Exactly, Lynn. You have to, sometimes I have to say it out loud just to keep figuring it out. So here we are. I've got the end. I can cut my thread here. I put an extra knot at the end. It's all in how much you want to do afterwards, but I like to use, I like to leave on these small ones two sides open. Sometimes it's nice just to hear people going through the um, their thinking process to see how they do it. So I leave these two open, which means I have to take out all of my papers. Sometimes you go put a little, use your needle or something to pull them out, or use a thin crochet hook or knitting needle or you know whatever you have that's pointed. 
See now this one, okay, I sewed through it just a little bit here and I'll just pull it out and just left a couple little holes around the edge. It's still perfectly good and useful. Same thing here. It seems I tend to sew through the paper in the corners more than anything. All right, to save me from poking myself, I'm going to trim my thread. All right, no more papers in it. We have our two openings, so then we're just going to turn our ball right side out. I like to keep a little bit of a portable bag of stuffing. Tried to join in the chat and it wouldn't post, so I refreshed my... I can see you, Jody. Sometimes it gets frozen and stuff. Andrea, I'm sorry, but I don't speak... She's from Colombia, so that's what, Spanish? I don't understand that. Now, Carol, I yell at the pattern sometimes. I don't talk to it. I yell at it because, like, what do you mean? I don't understand. Fluff out your fiber fill. And then you're just going to stuff your ball. I'm not going to be able to stuff this one because, you know, I didn't really sew it. But I would stuff it, and I take it, and I start down at the bottom, and I fill out this part down here. Kind of just keep pushing it all down so it's flat. And, yeah, I didn't sew it up very well. So then it's stitched there, right? Stuffed down there, right? So then I make, take my next bit. I fluff it up. I don't take a super a lot. I do take more in the ball than I would if I was stuffing, like, the legs of a monkey. And then I just kind of push it down. And I keep tucking it down and I pushing it down and filling it all in until you get it completely stuffed like this. Now when you're done, I'm going to still fill this, I'm going to sew this up, but after I sew it up, you can take your ball and if you go like this, it will round out all of your stuffing. If you have making sock monkeys, if you take their legs and go like this, it evens out their legs nicely. Now this part, is so conveniently left here so that we can do this. My ball is completely stuffed. I just got this little opening. I'm gonna keep stuffing it and even see like right here I have space so I can take some and just kind of put it down into there and take this and look there's a little divot there so I'll just tuck it down and I'll, I'll oh I bit my cheek. It all depends on how tightly stuffed you want it. Little, little kids, I like them a little bit looser so they can grab them. <laughs> Sorry, Sue. Sorry, Sue. Oh, thanks, Becky. Hi, Andrea. Good afternoon. Welcome to our craziness. We are just kind to whip through a little bit. I can make one of these balls in about an hour, hour and a half if I wasn't chatting and showing. You saw how fast I could sew all the little pieces. Thank you, Carol. And it just, it does go really quick. So if you want to have it so a little one can grab it and just play with it, then I wouldn't stuff it too much. An ornament, that's kind of up to you. It doesn't need to be firm. If you want it for your pets, Cats like to bat it around. Dogs do like to bite it, but they can bite into something firm and soft. So it's totally up to you, but I would just keep kind of mushing it around and pushing it down and filling in all of these spaces so that my pentagons are looking kind of flat, roundish on it. So there's no like little dimples in it. If I wanted it completely full, I see a lot of the balls with the names on it and stuff. So now I've created a hole right here in the center where I've pushed my thumb and moved everything to the outside, right? So all my outside is nice. So then it's so easy to just take your stuffing and shove it in the center of that hole. So you only had to fix it once, right? You got everything all beautiful, shoving it in with your thumb, making it your hand so it's all rounded. And then you just keep stuffing this hole. At least that's the way I do it. I find it super easy to stuff things that way. So let me show you how to do this up. Thank you, Carol. Uh-oh. Yeah, Vicki, you tell her. She wasn't wearing her mask, and now she has to sanitize her hands and the laptop. 
I stopped to where a point was here and I stopped as you can see about halfway down there so I didn't have two whole ones if you don't want to worry about the corners you can go ahead and stitch you know about an inch or so just leave your little spot here and then you don't have to do it but I go back into one of these corners just kind of stick it up into the flap area bring my thread out if you're just giving it to your kids or your pets or something, just go ahead and just whip stitch all the way around. You can kind of hold these two together and just make your stitches nice and small still and next to each other and just overcast it right over the top like this. If your thread is matching or sort of a neutral, like my gray is gonna disappear a little bit, you can just go like this Good job, Sue. <laughs> Vicki will keep you in line, she'll tell you. So you just whip stick it around like that. Now you're gonna have that little thread edge and you're gonna feel the roughness. If you want this stitched up edge to look like the rest of these, then we have to do the ladder stitch like we do when we're doing any other type of stuffed animal or if you're doing like maybe the bottom of a bag that you turned and you don't wanna machine sew it. I think of it like binding. When you're hand stitching binding, you go up into the top piece and you take a little stitch underneath in the flap so that it's not coming through to the top and you pull your thread and then you come directly down and on the inside of your bottom piece. I'm not very good at the ladder stitch. It drives me crazy so I just kind of fake it and get it the best I can. You're going to pick up a little stitch on the inside of that flap again, right? and then you're going to pull it through and not make a knot okay so you pull it through and as you're going it's called the ladder stitch because right here you can see all the rungs of the ladder from the thread you did as you get going you go a little bit and then you can just pull this tight it'll cinch it up and all of your stitches since they're on the inside will disappear and you just keep going all the way around like that Super simple, easy peasy in concept. When I say anything is difficult, it's more like it's fiddly, so as you're working through. Now what I say is if you are worried about your stitches showing in that edge, I dare you to go to somewhere simple like Walmart or even Kohl's and look at any of their stuffed animals. If you move around on their toys and you look around and you're gonna find a spot where they stitched it and it's all overcast and whip stitched on the outside. So you're paying 20, 30, 40 dollars for a toy that whip stitched it. So if you have a hard time with the ladder stitch like I do, just go ahead and get a nice matching thread and give yourself a little whip stitch, have a little grace for yourself and say, you know what? My new kitten is gonna love that, whether that's black thread on a white ball or what it looks like. As long as it's safe and secure, I say it's good to go. Lee Allen, you can practice the ladder stitch on just about anything without having to, you're welcome, Carol, without having to get into a big project. You can just take two pieces of fabric and make a fold. Let me see what I've got. All right, so I would take two pieces of fabric that are significantly different from each other, right? This one's already folded. So make yourself a little fold right here, right? And then take your next piece of fabric that matches up in length or whatever and give it a little bit of a fold right there. You're going to be working from the outside on any project, right? So then you can just practice your ladder stitch on here. Just a couple little, maybe two and a half inch strips, pieces at the end of a jelly roll folded over or something, a couple charm squares and just practice on there. That way you're not practicing on your, maybe you made one of those really gorgeous fuzzy bears out of the furry fabric and everything is just gorgeous. Well, first of all, the fur is gonna hide everything. But if you're making some type of a stuffed animal and you're fretting because it's ugly and you're taking the stitches out over and over again and it's weakening the fabric, you can always practice on a short little piece like this. Thank you, Carol. And that way you get a little bit of practice. It's really, it's one of those things where I struggle with it because I don't do it that often. I know how to do it and when I take my patience and I go little by little, then I can get it done. If I'm in a rush and I find I'm frustrated, 
I have learned that I need to practice to putting things away. I don't want to have, I don't, one second Sue, I don't want to, if this project is frustrating me, it's perfectly fine to set that aside and pull out something else to work on. And maybe in a half hour, hour, I'll have calmed down and I can go back to this. Now a whip stitch Sue is when you just take your two pieces like this and it's whip stitch or overcast and you just kind of whip it together just really quick over and over and over like this. Now the ladder stitch is like I showed you when you're doing it pretty much when you're putting the binding on the back of your quilt you're basically doing a ladder stitch. The only difference is this quilt part is flat and your binding is flappy. If these were both flappy it would still it would be a ladder stitch so you're just doing these two together flat like this just like if they were doing when you're doing your hexagons and you can do the the um, the ladder stitch with them. So if you have your right side of your fabric here on the back, you'll just be going through these pieces and do like a ladder stitch there. All right, did I, you guys said I did good. I appreciate that, thank you so much. Did you guys have any questions before I release you out into the world of craftiness today? Thank you for my moderators. I'm glad you guys didn't have any work to do today. Thank you, Jody. I really like this. I've seen a lot of, like the Tula Pink has a lot of the new stuff where they're putting together, they have their hexagons or their pentagons and they have these little narrow pieces that they'll put in like this. And then maybe they'll bring a square over and then they'll have a piece like this. Those are really, really fun. Thank you, thank you. So if anyone ever has a project idea that they want, if you want to just see a video, you can email me. If you want it to be a live stream so you can pester me with questions and I say pester in a loving way, I don't mind being pestered. When I get into the project, I might not always look over to the comments. That's why people has got to yell at me over and over again. They would be great. Did I ever show you my glass bowl? These would be great in that glass, that imaginary glass bowl I always talk about. Some nice fall colors and put them in the bowl. Thumbs up for everyone. Thank you so much. Bowl has been mentioned. I mention my bowl all the time, Sue. I'm very proud of my bowl. Would you like to know what I'm storing in my bowl right now? Extra rolls of paper towels. <laughs> I haven't put anything in my bowl because I'm afraid of the cats. No, I have not. No, I have not, Carol Lombard. I have not, I have not, I have not. I've seen the kits. I, I've seen them. They look really good. And I want to say they are one of those projects that look complicated, but it's super simple. Let me write that down on my Pentagon. Have you made one, Carol? I haven't. Making a bowl. Oh. I did, yeah, bowl. I showed you how to do the bowl, make a bowl. I want to make one of those fabric bowls with the really thick stuff that they put in it. New Christmas gift idea, yes. Julie, I didn't see you sneak in. Hi, Julie. Hi, Jennifer. Carol. Oh, well, maybe you should come over. Maybe we need you to do a video, huh? Christian. I've seen them a lot in the different, especially in the cross stitching community. They make them a lot because they make that really gorgeous cross stitch. Yes, Jody, I have a lot of one hour projects. I have them in my small, I have a playlist like, oh, small projects, quick projects, gifts or something like that. I am going to be finishing up. I was really, I was, I was ahead and I was having such a good time, but I knew I was going to be ahead on videos for a reason and it's because I lost two or three days on this air conditioning thing. It's kind of hard to work when the guys are right outside your door doing all kinds of stuff. But I'm going to, once we finish up all of our quilting, we are going to move right into holiday gifts and holiday decorations. I want to do, yeah, two five inch squares, that's a good size. I want to do the I want to use the clothesline bowls. I want to make some of those. I haven't, I've made one once before, but 
Hi, Laura. We're just finishing up. You're going to have to come back and watch the replay. You know, we're going to make a lot of Christmas gifts. I, you know, I, I'm going to write it down because I forgot it again, too. I've bought all the supplies to make bow ties. I want to make some bow ties on camera. I thought that'd be great for the little kids and stuff or for your, the men in your life. We can make clothesline bowls. We can make coasters. Those would make great gifts. We've already made regular coasters, so we don't need to make any more of those. We're going to make Christmas stockings. I don't know how many of you are into other holidays beyond Christmas. Christmas is my thing. Well, I mean, you can make dandies full size once you know the technique. We're going to make pillowcases. We will probably do some more pillow covers, like for the couch and stuff, cushion covers. And then, I don't know, we got to do some more ornaments. My Christmas ornament, the hexagon one from last year, was a huge hit. People are watching it again and talking about, oh, we need to make banners. We need to make bunting. I'm, I'm rewriting my list here to make sure they're all in my notebook, but I want to make holiday bunting. Mug rugs. We, you know, we've done Christmas mug rugs. We can do more mug rugs. Mug rugs are one of those things that it's more, I think, we should do the techniques, like how to do, we, I've done videos on how to use the backing as a binding, but a mug rugs we should do, let's see, for quilts, it's a, is it, what is, is it a folded binding? Is that what they call it? A double fold binding. So mug rugs need a single fold binding, so we need to do that. I have EPP turkeys on towels, so. Oh, sorry, Vicki. I was writing with it. That's why I was writing with it. At least it's not the rotary cutter. Stephanie's back. We're finishing up and going. <laughs> well, this is one of those pens where you can buy a big box of them at Staples, but it keeps coming separated right here this blue part so I'm kind of like you know and then I have I have my scribble scratch list I've got going on over here so if anyone has an idea of you know what they would like to see I'm writing it down even little things we can do any you know little quick videos here and there too I can do either a quick five minute video or a series of ones like how to change the rotary blade where do you store i have a i have two videos that are coming up one of how to get the red out of that little christmas quilt that i made with the the mini stacks i have that video going i have a video people keep asking me about my scraps so i have a vi another video about scraps coming up so a whole bunch of the little things like that and 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 i am holding back a few surprises but one of them is is the calculator tape i have a project that is a new way to do that um, we're going to do it for those people that don't like to use the paper and remove the paper i have a new way to make that i have two new ways that i'm going to show you coming up soon oh stephanie hand sewing hmm. well what comes to mind, I'm, I'm writing, can't write and talk. Well, I can, but I can't say real words. The first thing that comes to mind is I like to do like applique, whether it's felt applique or fabric applique. Those are great in waiting rooms. On my socks stitch itch, I use the flegal heel. You don't have to pick up any stitches. The only thing with a flegal heel is, is you cannot have a contrasting heel. It is knit in the round. And then when you turn the heel, you, you know, when you're decreasing it down, you, you know, you're forming your stitches back and forth and you're decreasing it down. Then you only work on the heel, but everywhere else you're going round and round and round. It is super easy. It looks like the socks that I buy at the store. Bye Jody. You, you were supposed to be sewing masks while we were playing. Those were the rules. You have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later. I still use the calculator tape. Yep, me too. I was just looking at my chrome curtains today, thinking I need to get onto my curtains for the kitchen. 
scraps, scraps, scraps. Yeah, I'm trying to come up with anything that we do with scraps, all the different projects. Throw some bags in there here and there that are made regular but can be changed over. You're very welcome, Stitch Itch. Look that up. It is, it's just something I came across when I was learning how to knit two socks at the same time on circular needles. And it was just, it's just super simple. My son loves the way they fit. They fit his heel. They fit my heel. I don't have to, it's, it's very similar to when you're, if you start toe up socks and you're increasing, it's the same way you're increasing on both sides on just the heel until you're up to us. There's a formula that you do. So then when you get up to that side and then you just go ahead and bring it back down and it fits so comfortably. You had coffee in your hand. Oh, so you can't sew while you're drinking your coffee? I get it. Let's see, scrap, scrap, scraps. Yeah, so we're going to talk more about, we'll be always talking about scraps and different ways to store them. I bought, I bought, I know you guys seen the small ones, but I bought the larger version of these so that I can sort my scraps by color because some of you have been very generous and sent me colored scraps versus just like, like, okay, so this is blue, yes, and this is yellow and black and white, but then you get like this. These scraps don't fit into like a specific color, so those are novelty. And then this one I couldn't decide. I don't know, is, is it green? Is it purple? So I have that in my miscellaneous bin. But I spent a lot of time sorting scraps yesterday and it was kind of fun. It is, there's some videos on it. It's like, Stitch Itch, it's like a very unknown thing. It's, it's not, because people like, people like, it's, I'm not very well, rounded and knowledgeable with exactly how to do things. I follow a pattern with socks and I do what it tells me to, or I take six patterns and mix them together. I don't know the formulas and why this works in that way, but a lot of people like heel flaps and gussets and stuff, and it still kind of has that gussety look to it. And it's just, do I have, I have, I have socks here. Okay, so this one I had, I did where you had to pick it up. So you have to pick it up and you get that ridge and stuff. I don't think I have any flegals with me. And I just don't like having to pick up stitches and everything. But with the flegal, you still get that little room for your heel. And it's just a really nice, fun one to try. Try it out on some baby socks. It's nice and quick. I, my batiks are so special, they stay over on their own section and I don't put them with anyone else. I have, I pulled out more polka dots. I have those all separated. I've actually been being good about separating my fabrics before I've even bought the bookcases to put everything on. Uh-oh, someone's eating something good. Go back. Oh, a vanilla milkshake. Mmm. All right, guys, I am going to let you go. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and for getting me through at that last phase when I hit the wall and I just couldn't make it past. I think these would be fun to have in that bowl. <laughs> I can, I want to look at the spots where I just kind of whipped it together. But it was really, it was, it was fun. It's a great project. You can take this with you. I actually, when I had surgery on my right shoulder, I was able to do this because I would put my needle through and then I would kind of like pull my fabric and I put my needle through and I pull my fabric. So if you have problems with arthritis and stuff, as long as you can hold that needle, there's ways to do it. And I did it while sitting in the doctor's office all the time. Okay, next live stream today is the third. So our next one will be on the 17th. We are going to stick with the first Saturday and the third Saturday unless I say anything different. I will always warn you guys ahead of time. I will put up a video for supplies on the Friday before if we're doing a tutorial. So on our next one, I'm not sure if I'm going to specifically do the scarves. That is at the top of my mind, so I probably should but I will give it a little think on it and we'll go from there because it's October. We need to start getting things in the mail soon if we're gonna mail them far away and get all these Christmas gifts going. 
Thanks, Carol. I like to dabble in a little bit of everything. Yes, it's it's really good. Like this one is nice and soft, so you can start with the low resistance of getting your fingers going. This one has a needle in it, so I want to be careful. And this one's firmer, so at, depending on how you stuff it, it'll go a little by little. Scraps multiply when you're not looking. Bye, Judy. If I don't hit this button and turn it off, we are going to be here all afternoon. So thanks for hanging out with me. I will see you next time, and you guys have a great day.